Uh, but anyways, I left what most people would call a good thing um, because I was getting promoted and I was well respected and everything, but I decided to leave that to start my own business. Now get this, I didn't really have a solid business plan or an idea or, or what I was gonna do. Uh, I was really interested in SEO um, at the time and I was studying it in my spare time. I wanted to start an SEO company. Uh, and keep in mind back then, SEO was still relatively new. I wanted to work with local businesses and increase their search presence and stuff like that. So I left to do that without really a solid plan on what I was going to do. So needless to say, after I left, I had no work. Um, I, I didn't really do too much. <laughs> and so I think for the first two weeks, I was just resting and reveling in the fact that I didn't have to go to work. Um, what I actually ended up doing soon after leaving that company A was I started working with company B doing contracts for them because uh, they knew that I had left and they said, hey, we have this little project for you if you want it and we're going to pay you a consulting company uh, type fee. It wasn't $175 an hour, but it was still more than I was making at company A. So I said, you know, I'm not doing anything. Why not? So I started doing these little contracts for them. And soon enough, I found myself like a freelancer. I was basically doing contract work. What I was exactly what I was doing at company A, but except making more money uh, in less time. It was also at this time that there were two employees from company A, you know, the consulting company I just left, that they wanted to start their own thing. And they had some contract work for me to do. So I decided to do that for them. Uh, but soon enough, I, I said, you know what, I want in on this. I, I kind of want to start this with you. And they eventually, they left company A. And while they couldn't give me equity, I decided to join them as their first employee, but with profit sharing. So I got something like 3% profit sharing, which was huge because at that company A, there was a group of partners at the very top and they got a small percentage of profit sharing but that company A was making millions of dollars. So you can imagine like even 3%, 5% or something like that is, is a great amount of money. Uh, so, you know, I had 3% profit sharing. I had no equity. I was working with these two guys who were much older than me actually. And uh, so they had a lot of business experience and uh, technical experience on top of me. And I was okay with that at this point because you know what? I'm kind of working in my own business. I'm, I'm seeing something from the ground up. And that was cool. I did that for about a year. And get this, we were working uh, in the lunchroom of a dental office that one of the co-founders knew the dentist. Um, the dentist was their friend. So the dentist let us work in his dental office in the lunchroom. <laughs> so during around noon, while we were working, there would all be all these people, they were coming in and heating their food and then sitting beside me while they're eating their lunch and I'm coding away if you can imagine that. But this wasn't a public lunchroom, it was just for the staff. So you can imagine us three working at this company, doing small consulting jobs. We didn't make a lot of money. I didn't really get paid. I was okay with that. Um, I think in the end, we started paying ourselves like 1,500 a month, which is, you know, nothing at the point, but I was okay because we were working on something. We we're building something. We had to decide on the name of the business, the, the logo and everything. And it was really cool. It was really cool to see all of that stuff happen. The scariest part about leaving that consulting company A and doing this where I was barely getting paid anything was my girlfriend's mom and telling her that I was going to leave this job where I was getting promoted. I was getting like raises every year uh, and leaving that to do this, which paid me nothing and it was a big risk. So, you know, so I'm thankful that she was okay with it and she didn't tell my now wife back then to leave me because I was, you know, gonna take this risk. So she had a little bit of faith in me. So I'm thankful for that. So working at this company C, this little company with the two co-founders and myself, let's call this company C, uh, we weren't making any money, but Slowly, little by little, we started getting more clients and we started getting more work. So uh, we hired a couple of people and I was in charge of managing them. And as you can imagine, having so little people and going through these kind of growing pains, I started working harder and harder. And because I treated this like my own business, uh, there were no set hours. There, You didn't get to go home at five or six. Uh, I was working all the time, right? And Partly, I think this is my fault, right? For not having a balance and being the young person that I was, um, I would push hard. I was put, I would push really hard. And 
I eventually burned myself out, to be honest. So during this time, I got married as well. And I remember it during our honeymoon to the Bahamas, I was actually working uh, during the evenings. So yeah, it was tough. And after that, around, around that time, uh, one of the co-founders, they took me aside and they said, Chris, you're, you're working like an employee. You're not thinking like a business owner. And you know what? I was giving it my all and I was burning myself out and I was working late into the night every night. I thought I was giving everything. And to hear him say that really hurt me. You know, it, I think I got a little bit offended. Now thinking back on it, he was trying to help me and he was trying to explain to me to how to work smarter and how to find ways to get the work done without actually burning myself out because I wasn't doing a good job of it. You know, it wasn't doing anyone good uh, for me to be stretched so thin. So, you know, thinking like a business owner, I probably would have tried to, to outsource, get help, hire more people, you know, to get all the work done. And anyways, I, I kind of got insulted and coupled with the fact that we weren't making that much money that fast, weren't paying ourselves. I was only getting 3% profit. I was thinking, how long would it take for me to actually realize um, those gains? you know, for the profit sharing. And so I decided I couldn't do that. Um, it wasn't worth it for me to sacrifice. At that time, I thought sacrifice my marriage um, for this company and, and to do this to myself. Money wasn't that important to me that I had to do that. And so I left and that was probably a year and a year and a half. And at this point in time, I just decided I'm gonna go work at a bank because uh, I had interned at a bank before Banks were notorious for being slow moving, uh, you know, working set hours, going home at five and pay was decent, not good, but it was decent. And I decided I would rather have decent pay, but a good work life balance, you know, go home at five, not worry about work and not get stressed out and not burn myself out. So I, I decided to do that. Um, around this time as well, those two guys from company B, remember when I did the Silverlight Tech Group with those two guys? By this time, they were actually 11 people big. So they caught me at the right time and they said, you know, Chris, how are you doing at, at that business? How are you feeling? So I told them how I felt and said, you know what, before you go work at that bank, <laughs> why don't you give us a try? Do four months with us or was it three months? We'll pay you this amount of money, see how you like it and uh, we'll take it from there. And no harm done if you decide to, to leave. So I decided to take them up on that offer and I worked at their their startup, their little company for about three months. And it was awesome. It was it was really awesome working at a company that was just the right size. It was about 10 people because it was because you knew everybody and there was a really good sense of family. Everyone helped everyone out. Um, we shared victories together. We shared losses together. Uh, and it was there was just this great sense of team and family in that company and after three months I decided to join them full-time and I started the salary there at 70k so it was just 2k more than when I left the company a okay so when I started working with this uh, company C the smaller 10 person or 11 person consulting company I got to work on Windows Phone 7 at that moment in time Windows Phone just launched and guess what you built Windows Phone apps using Silverlight. So it was right up my alley. So I got to work on more touchscreen stuff and this time mobile, that was my first foray into mobile. And we built Windows Phone apps for people, for clients. I didn't get to travel as much anymore because uh, their clients were all local. After doing Windows Phone 7 with them, uh, they got some work for iOS and nobody at our company knew iOS or Objective-C. So they gave me the task to learn it and to do it for this big Canadian broadcasting company. And so I had to learn Objective-C in, in something like a month. And I built this iPad app for them to read the news on. It wasn't great. I mean, I mean, presentation wise, it looked good, but behind the scenes, the code was a mess because it was my first foray into Objective-C and memory management. Back then you had to uh, allocate objects, deallocate objects. You had to manage your own memory and uh, you would either get this terrible crash if you didn't manage it well, or you'd get a slow memory leak and your app would eventually crash. So you would have to find the sources of these memory leaks and and solve them. It was a great learning experience and I, and I loved having uh, gone through it because now I know um, what it's like and how things work under the hood. But 
it was kind of a nightmare to do. And I'm so glad I don't have to manage memory now, working with Swift and building apps now. But anyways, working at that company, I saw it grow from uh, 12 people. I keep changing this number, but it was something around 10 to 12. I think I was the 12th employee, all the way up to 70 people. And we moved offices three times. And we started working with bigger and bigger clients with bigger and bigger demands. And once again, I started slowly getting burnt out. And there was this one day where I was working on a project and it was tight timeline. Uh, we were nearing the end of the wire and I stayed at the office till something like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. And the next day, so I went home. Next day, I got into the office at nine. I sat down in my chair. My eyes were hurting. My back was hurting because I had done several nights of this. And I said, enough is enough. You know, I, I can't do this anymore. I need to take a break. I literally, I, I wasn't gonna quit, um, but I was gonna take a break. So I talked to one of the co-founders and I told him, you know what? I really need to take two months off. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna come back, <laughs> I told him. 